Hello everyone, this is the TI-84 guy. Hi, how are you? It's been a while since I've created a video, but I'm back uh, with another program. Or I should say, it's actually an improvement over a program that I wrote last year called, T um, called uh, Quadratic uh, that I wrote for the TI-84+. Plus. Um, I've written, I've actually updated that program to make it more flexible to handle fractions and um, decimals uh, without any issues. Uh, but the program is actually written for the TI-84 Plus CE, not the TI-84 Plus. Um, this program has some, some um, commands in it that will only work on the CE, that will not work on the TI-84 Plus. So, I want to say that up front and make sure it's clear. If you don't have a TI-84 Plus CE, this program won't work for you. You'll have to go with the quadratic program that I wrote uh, last year. Um, it does pretty much everything that this one does except that it doesn't handle fractions. So um, so that's the, that's the one thing I want to say up front. Now, the reason that I've... Um, the reason that I wrote... I changed the program is I wanted to make it more flexible. Uh, part of the reason is if you look at the TI-84 Plus, it only the width of the screen is only 16 characters. So if you're trying to use fractions and some other things, you use up a lot of bandwidth just trying to put the fractions in there, right? Now, as opposed to the TI-84 Plus CE, it has 26 characters. So this has 16, this has 26, about 63% more capacity on this screen. So so, this program is designed for the TI-84 uh, CE. Alright, so now, um, it has the basic functionality that the quadratic program has, except that it's a little bit more flexible because it can handle fractions and decimals. So, let me just go through some of the basic functionality really quick. Um, and I'll also include the link to the uh, old program so that if you have a TI-84+, Plus. Um, you can check that out, and if you want a copy of that, let me know and send me an email. All right, so here. So the first one that I want to do, I'm going to show you that it can fact, it can take a standard quadratic and factor it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the program. The program is actually called Quadrate with the E at the end. It's not quadratic because I've already have a quadratic for the TI-84+. Plus. But this one has an E at the end, so I choose that, uh, press enter, and it's going to have the, the same four inputs. Standard, vertex form, factored form, or do you know three points so that you can generate a quadratic. All right, in this case, we're going to choose option one, which is standard, and we're just going to put in the coefficients. So the A term is going to be eight. The B term is going to be a negative 12. The C term is going to be a negative 8. Once you've entered that, you will just choose option 1, factor. And it'll factor it. So the factored form is 4, parentheses 2x plus 1, parentheses x minus 2. And if you look at the answer, that's exactly what we see. Now, here's, here's the improvement. So this program can also handle um, standard quadratics that have fractions or decimals in it. So I want to show that um, first. Um, standard, um, all you're going to do is enter the coefficients the same way, except that it's going to have fractions. So it's 5 divided by 2 for A. The second one is going to be a negative 11 divided by 2. The third one is just 1. And we want to factor it. So we choose option one and it factors it. So you'll see that it has the leading coefficient is one half. The, um, the terms are five X minus one and X minus two. If you look at the choice here or the answer, you'll see that's what we have. Now, I want to show you again, uh, I tried to make this as, as flexible as possible. We can go from factored to the standard form. So I'm going to choose in this case, I'm going to choose option 3 for factor, and the leading coefficient is 1 half. So I would go 1 divided by 2, 
and then the F term is going to be 5. The O term is going to be a negative 1. The I term is going to be 1. And the L term is going to be a negative 2. All right, now I want to put it in the standard form. So I'm going to choose option 3. And there you have it. The standard form is what we expect. It's 5 over 2 for the leading coefficient. The B term is a negative 11 over 2. The C term is 1. All right, so first thing. Second thing, I want to show you that it can still complete the square. So I'm going to just show you using this pro uh, problem right here. It's got a um, it's got a fraction in it for the B term, and we want to complete the square. So uh, press enter, and we're going to enter it as a standard. And the A term is going to be one. The B term is going to be a negative five divided by three, and the C term is what we're trying to find in order to complete the square. So I put a zero there, and now. I want to use the vertex form output and so the in order to complete the square I would have to add 25 over 36 which is what it says here now I'm going to do one more um, here I have uh, y squared minus 5 14 y plus c and we're trying to find out what c is to complete the square so we do the same thing press enter press standard uh, the, a the A term is 1, the B term is a negative 5 divided by 14, and the C term of course is 0, press enter, and then we would put it in the vertex form, so option 2, and it tells us that the, the amount, let me see, make sure you can see that, the amount that we would add would be 25 over 784, which is what we have here, 25 over 784. All right, so it can complete the square. Now, so here's the other thing that I, I need to, I wanted to show. So sometimes you're giving graphs and you have to try to come up with the equations. Um, so in this case, um, let's see, is this what I want to do? Uh... Actually, this is what I want to do. I wanted to show you um, that I can take the standard form, put it into vertex form. So the first one that I'm looking at is number 3. It's a negative x squared minus 14x minus uh, 59. I'm going to put it into the vertex form. So press enter. And I'm going to choose 1 again. The um, a term is a negative 1. The b term is a negative 14. The c term is a negative 59. All right, and then I wanted to put it in the vertex form, so I choose option two, and you see that it um, puts it into the vertex form. The um, the x coordinate of the vertex would be a negative seven. The y coordinate would be a negative ten. All right, now um, I want to definitely show you this problem because I think this is a good example. So here is a, it's in factored form, and we want to put it in the vertex form. So I'm going to do that, and for, and then I'm going to take the vertex form. And I'm going to put it back into factor form just to show that it, it could go either way. So choose option 3 for factor. Um, choose option 3 for factor. And I'm going to put in 1 for the A term. I'm going to put in 1 for the F term. I'm going to put in 5 for the O term. I'm going to put in 1 for the I term going to put in 4 for the L term. Now I want it in the vertex form, so I choose option 2, and there you have it. You can see that the x coordinate is going to be a negative 9 over 2, and the y coordinate is going to be a negative 1 fourth, is, and that's what we see here. Now, just to show you that we can go both ways, now I'm going to go from the vertex form to the um, factored form. So the A term would be 1, the h term is going to be a negative 9 over 2. The k term is going to be a negative 1 divided by 4. And I'm going to put it in the factored form. And voila, we got x plus 5, x plus 4, which is what we expect. So it can go from standard to vertex, 
from factor to vertex or vice versa. Now, uh, this is what I wanted to show you. Um, I have a couple of I have a couple problems I wanted to show you. So if you're given a graph, let's say they didn't give you the equation, right? But you want the equation, right? So if you can pull three points from the graph, it'll generate the equation for you. So let's let's do that. I want to show that. So the option that you would use is option four, three points. So press enter um, four. All right. Now you got to make sure when you're doing this that you have integer um, coordinates. And the way to do that is to make sure you get something that goes to the corners of these these squares. So the first point that I'm going to use uh, is going to be a negative four, three. So it's going to be a negative, so I enter a negative four and then three. And then my next point, I need another point that goes through a corner. And here's one, a negative two, four, a negative two, four. And then I can use symmetry to get the other one as negative six, four, negative six, four, press enter. All right, now I'm going to put it in the vertex form. So there you have it. So it generates the standard uh, equation from the three points, but it also generated the output, which was the vertex form. And as you can see, it has fractions in it, but it handled everything perfectly. Now I'm going to go over to this one now. Um, same thing. I need three points on this graph. Enter those three points and then whatever form you want it in. If you want it in the standard form, this one's not factorable, you can tell, because it's not crossing the x-axis. So we're going to just put it into the vertex form again. So press enter, choose option four, and then you need the coordinates. So here's one coordinate. It would be a negative five, two. So you put in a negative five, two. And then you need another point where it goes through the corner. So I would say a negative three, uh, negative three, um, three, negative three, three. So negative three, three. And then again, by symmetry, I will use uh, a negative seven, three. Negative seven, three. And now I'm gonna put it in vertex form again. And as you can see, one fourth x plus five squared plus two um so it comes up with everything for you so um now the reason that i'm showing you this is um i have some i have some problems here that i've taken from past or the practice sat exams and i want to show you how i would use this program okay now the video, my video is already 13 minutes, so I'm going to stop this and then I'm going to make another video um, where I demo this program using it on actual SAT questions. Uh, a couple of the questions I've taken from, a P, from PSAT exams as well. So now um, I'm going to end here, but I will be back with um, examples of actual SAT questions. Now, if you want this program, you must have a TI-84 plus CE. It doesn't work on the TI-84 plus. If you want this, three things. You need to subscribe to my channel. Um, subscription is here. You also need to um, like the video. I'd appreciate it if you would like it. And then if you would send me your email, uh, I will get you the program as soon as possible. Please make sure you send me your email. A couple people have contacted me for programs, but they don't send they don't include their email address or they've they've made a couple of typos in their email address. So when I try to send it to them, I get an error and it doesn't reach them. So make sure your email address is correct when you type it in. But other than that, uh, I am going to come back. And I'm going to go through about 10 questions from old, from practice SAT exams so that I could show you specifically how to use a program to attack some of those problems. All right. This is the TI-84 guy signing off. I'll see you in a little bit.